All right, so in the last video, you got a good idea that these rational inequalities are a real pain. There is a fair amount of conceptual difficulty, but I think the real difficulty lies in the fact that they're just long as can be. It's just really, really tedious. Well, welcome to College Algebra, where fun dies. Not that it ever lived here. But in any case, enough of my bitching. Um, let's see. So on 38, page 44 in P4, we've got x times x minus 4, divided by x minus 2 times x plus 3. Well, this is actually going to be quite nice because our first step is everything on one side. Well, that's done. The right-hand side is already zero. There's nothing, in a sense, on the right-hand side. For two, we're going to have to combine everything into one fraction but that's already done. There's no need to add or subtract any fractions. There's just one big fraction. That's exactly what we want to see at the end of step two. Then we're going to need to factor the numerator and denominator. Well, that's already done as well. This is an excellent example. We hardly have to do any work. Now, we're going to have to set the... Uh, oh, actually, what was it? Uh, yeah, combined fractions. I want to make sure I'm... Yes, good. Three is fact... Good. I want to give you consistent steps. Uh, don't want to be any more confusing than I absolutely have to be. So we're going to set the numerator and the denominator equal to zero. So in this case we're going to set x times x minus 4 equal to zero and we're going to set x minus 2 times x plus 3 equal to zero. Well that means you know we've got a product being zero, so we set each factor of that product equal to zero. And the same applies with setting the denominator equal to zero. You know, we get x minus two equals zero, or x plus three equals zero. So we're gonna have a lot to test. x equals zero, yeah, nothing to do here. x minus four equals zero, well that happens when x is four x minus 2 equals 0, well, that happens when x equals 2. x plus 3 equals 0, that happens when x equals minus 3. All right. So, now we're on to my preferred method of the number line. And we're going to have a lot. We're going to have four different places where we could this thing could switch from positive to negative, above to below. So that's going to give us five regions. Anyway, the leftmost x value is minus three. So the first x value we're going to put on the x-axis is minus three. Then what comes next is zero. Zero comes next. Minus two, minus one, zero. Next comes 2. 2 is the next smallest. 1, 2, and then finally 4. 3, 4. Now you may have noticed from polynomial and rational inequalities that whenever you have the inequality be or equal to, you will include endpoints. But as we noticed in the last video, you will never include the endpoints 
where the denominator is zero. In this case, these x values make the denominator zero, because if you follow these steps back, this is setting the denominator equal to zero. So with rationals, you will never, ever, ever include these values that make the denominator zero. But since we have or equal to, we can let the expression be zero. So for the things that I'm including, I'm putting them down as closed dots, and the things that I'm excluding, I'm putting those down as open dots. And in these examples, I kind of like to do that first. Uh, but you could do that first in polynomials, you know, however you like, or you can do it last. It's really up to you. But this is my preference, and I'm all alone in here my, by, in my apartment, so I'm doing what I want. All right. So this region is, everything here is all x values less than minus 3. This region is everything between minus 3 and 0, but we can take 0. When you pick a test value, you actually can't pick the endpoints. You have to pick something in between, because we know this is going to be 0. That doesn't tell us how it's going to happen. What's going to happen in between here? We want to know inside. Is it above or below? We know it's zero here. You know, pull up plugging in zero doesn't tell us anything new. So you actually have to pick something like, you know, try x equals minus one here. But that rant aside, zero less than or equal to x less than two is the next interval. Uh, 2 less than x less than or equal to 4, and then everything to the right of 4 is all x values greater than or equal to 4. So x less than minus 3. We're going to try, say, x equals minus 4. Pulling a number out of thin air, that makes our lives relatively easy. Plug in minus 4. Minus 4 times minus 4 minus 4 divided by minus 4 minus 2 times minus 4 plus 3 so that's a let's see minus 4 times minus 8 over minus 6 times minus 1 now, if you want to, you can work this out. There's nothing wrong with, you know, figuring out that this is 32 over 6 and that that is 16 over 3. And, oh, by the way, that's positive, which is all we care about. There's nothing wrong with doing that. And if you prefer that, stick with it. But you can just do what I'll do for the rest of these, and what I did in the last video, and just care about the signs, because we, we, that's all we care about. We don't care, you know, it's 16 thirds. Who cares? Is it positive or negative? That's all we want to know. X equals minus, yeah, we already picked this one. X equals minus 1, because we couldn't pick an endpoint. We have to pick for our test point something between. Minus 1. Minus 1, minus 4. Minus 1, minus 2, minus 1, plus 3. So this is minus 1 times minus 5 over minus 3 times 2. So that's negative times negative over negative times positive. 1, 2, 3 negatives ends up giving me a negative. That's what I mean by doing the signs. Between 0 and 2. We can't pick 0, and we can't pick 2, so the only nice thing is trying x equals 1. So if we plug 1 in, that's 1 times 1 minus 4 over 1 minus 2 times 1 plus 3, and that is 1 times minus 3 over minus 1 times 4, that's positive, times negative, over negative, times positive. Two negatives make a positive. 
between two and four. Can't pick two, can't pick four. Only nice thing in here is three. Not forced to pick three. You can pick anything you want between two and four. But for God's sakes, be, be good to yourself. Three. Uh, three times three minus four over three minus two times three plus three. That's, oops, jumping the gun here. Three times minus one over one times six. That's positive times negative over positive times positive, which is negative. Remember everything they did for us? Remember everything we got to skip over? And people wonder why college algebra is so unpopular. X equals five. Five times five minus four over five minus two. Five plus that's 5 times 1 over 3 times 8. That's positive times positive over positive times positive. I see nothing but positives, so the result is positive. Now, finally, we decide upon plus or minus, and we've already decided upon endpoints. We did that with the open and closed dots. But just in case you prefer to leave that to the very end, I'll include that in the name as well. So we want this thing to be less than zero. Things less than zero are negative. Negatives are below the x-axis. So we want the stuff between minus three and zero and the stuff between two and four. Everything else is positive. It's something we don't want in this case. So, our answer is going to be minus 3 is less than x is less than or equal to 0 or 2 is less than x is less than or equal to 4. And in interval notation, which you do not have to write, this is minus 3 comma 0, close bracket, cup or union parentheses 2 comma 4 bracket but all you have to give me is that